If you're looking for a view, well, this is not the place for you to be. Nowadays, this is more a place for walking your dog. I was here once or twice a year when I was a kid. Took a stroll around this little lake. But unfortunately, the city of Mülheim has no... M Wait a minute. Mülheim? Oops, wrong town. Sorry. Duisburg City Forest, or as we say in Duisburg, Stadtwald. It stretches over five kilometers from north to south and over one and a half kilometers from east to west, and is placed less than three kilometers from the city center. The city forest is the biggest coherent wooded area in Duisburg and together with the surrounding wooded areas it reaches a size of 30 square kilometers. This behind me is part of the mansion called Haus Hartenfeld. It's built on the highest place here in Duisburg. It was built by an industrial magnet called Klöckner, one of the richer people here. This highest point here in Duisburg is 82.5 meters over sea level. After the Second World War, fugitives and people who lost their houses because of the war found a living place here. The house was rotting away. Then, 10 years ago, the whole place was renovated and apartments from 77 square meters to 380 square meters were built. No problem with a 3,800 square meter palace, right? Just one and a half kilometers south southwest of Haus Hartenfels lies the old quarry. Since the 11th century, this quarry has delivered stones and rocks for streets and houses in the Duisburg area. The charter from 1129 allows every citizen break stones here. In the 16th century they even did some coal mining here with no success. Breaking and digging stones stopped in 1874 and since then the holes were filled up with water that give this area this dreamy look. always amazing to see how green the city actually is from above. When you're walking through the streets, you don't see it as green. But being above like this actually shows how much green there really is. Our next stop here at the city forest is something called Heiliger Brunnen, sacred fountain. Mm -hmm. 
The legend says that people had to dig a tunnel while the Vikings were seizing the city to get some fresh water from here. Later, from 1583 to 1589, Duisburg was occupied by Spanish troops fighting against the Reformation. And legends tell about this fountain saving the citizens of this town. The water coming out of this fountain is no drinking water and it's claimed to be worthless because it contains no minerals and no healing powers. But still, you can see people sometimes filling small bottles with the water from this source. We're trying to find a tree. A tree that my father, as a 16-year-old, carved his name into. So well, this is going to be a treasure hunt. To be honest, he was only 13 when he carved this tree. The only thing we knew was that it was close to Heiligerbrunn. But my father had a pretty good <coughs> idea where this tree was standing. SC. <laughs> Unfortunately, the incident being like almost 60 years ago, we couldn't really be 100% sure that we found the right tree. But it looked very much like we did. My little brother. Little. Come, get the Fernsehen! In very close proximity to Heiligerbrunn is this place. Every year, from May to September, the two biggest Christian churches in Germany, Catholics and Protestants, hold services here in the forest. And right next to this place of Christian worship is a wild boar enclosure. And here they can live relatively freely. Which my family actually got quite fond of while we were here. There are definitely more places in the city forest to explore. But that is going to be a task for season three next year. Well, with a family like that, who needs enemies? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Catch you on the flip side. Talk Tom signing off.